Hi, my name is Adam. Welcome to the channel. Today is video one of our five video series on what happens to your RRSP when you retire. So today we're going to talk about transitioning from an RRSP, a registered retirement savings plan, to a RIF, a retirement income fund. So, you know, transitioning from saving for retirement to having a retirement income from your RRSP. So over the next five days, we're gonna release a video every single day on retiring in Canada, transitioning from you know collecting a paycheck to generating a paycheck out of your retirement savings account, how that works, you know, some tips and tricks, some transition, uh, how, you know, how to do it effectively, uh, reduce tax bills along the way, and just make sure that you set yourself up for the most effective retirement income flow that you can do. We did a short mini series like this on CPP, Canadian Pension Plan, about a month ago. If you haven't watched those videos, we'll put a link above here. We'll also link them below as well. Make sure to watch our CPP videos. If you're you know, 50 plus kind of heading up to retirement or maybe already in retirement, but haven't started your CPP, make sure to check those videos out. It has a bunch of information on how CPP works, when to take it, and case studies around taking it at 60, 65, and 70. So let's jump into it. What happens to your RRSP when you retire? Well, when you retire, doesn't matter what age you retire at, you don't really have to do anything with it until you want to start drawing income out of it. So you have your RRSP, let's assume you're 65 years old and you pull the trigger and you retire. You can actually start redeeming money right out of your RSP. Now, not beneficial to do so, but you could technically just start pulling money out of your RSP. There would be a withholding tax, uh, anywhere from 10 to 30%, depending on the amount that you took out. Um, so there'd be withholding tax, you get left with the net amount, and that would be taxable income to you. You can't split that income. It's taxable income to you in the year that you withdrew it. Now, a more beneficial way or a better way to do it once you hit retirement is to convert your RRSP to a RIF. Again, whether you do it 65, 60, 70, it doesn't really matter. With the conversion from an RRSP to a RIF, that has to be done in the by the year you turn 71. So in the year you turn 71, if you haven't already converted your RRSP to a RIF, that needs to be converted to a RIF. Now, you do not have to take money out that very first year. Okay, so the very first required withdrawal out of your RIF, if you convert at year 71, is in the year you turn 72. So that first year where you convert, no withdrawal has to be done. You can if you want, but it doesn't have to be. Only in the 72nd year, um, you'd have to actually take some money out. Now, if you retire a bit earlier, so let's say you, you know you reach out to me and you say, you know, Adam, I'm 60 years old. I retired a bit early. I'm not starting CPP, whatever, and I actually want to draw a bit of an income out of my RRSP. How do I do that tax efficiently and effectively? So, our recommendation is always to convert some, maybe all, depending on how big your RRSP is, of that money to a RIF. So. Let's say you have $500,000 in an RSP and you want to generate $10,000 a year of income out of there. What I would recommend doing is you can move part of your RSP to a RIF. You don't have to convert the whole amount at once. So let's say out of your $500,000 RSP, we would convert $100,000, let's say, or $50,000 to a RIF, okay? They're invested the exact same. An RSP and a RIF, that's basically the umbrella, the, the, the name of the account. The investments themselves within the account can be the same, they can be different, however you want to do, but technically you could have the exact same structure portfolio investment under a RIF as you do under your RSP. So we would move about fifty dollars to $100,000 from your RSP over to the RIF and start drawing money out of there. So when you move money to a RIF, a retirement income fund, there is a minimum amount that you have to take out every year. And we'll put a link to that below. So once you've made that conversion, there is a minimum requirement that you have to take out. There's no maximum, okay? So if you put 50,000 over to your RIF and you know something came up and you needed to take the whole amount out, you can do that. There's no maximum on a RIF, okay? Um, so if you, when you take that money out, anything up to the minimum amount. So let's say you put 100,000 in there and the minimum for the year is $4,000 and that's all you take out for the year. There is no withholding tax on the minimum amount of RIF withdrawal. 
Anything above the minimum, there's a withholding tax, okay? Zero to $5,000 is 10%. Five to fifteen thousand dollars is twenty percent, and anything above fifteen thousand over the minimum amount is thirty percent withholding tax. So the withholding tax numbers are the same as if you pull money out of an RSP earlier as well. So they work the same. But again, that minimum amount, no withholding tax. But remember, it's still taxable income. So if you have a pension plan and other things going on, other income sources coming in, if you take four thousand dollars out of your RIF. There's no taxes withheld at source, but maybe you, you, you can turn that on if you want. So talk to your financial planner, investment person, whoever looks after your RIF. Maybe you want to have a 10 or 20% withholding tax on anything you pull out because you are going to be taxed on it come tax time. So when you hit retirement, you want to convert some or all of your RSP to a RIF once you start pulling money out of there. So as soon as you need to start redeeming money in retirement from your RSP, we would recommend converting some or all of it, depending on how much RSP you have and how much income flow that you need out of your RIF. Um, you know, again, some or all of your RSP to a RIF at time of income need, okay? And again, this can be done, it has to be done by the year you turn 71, but it can be done earlier. It can be done anytime after you turn 55, okay? So there's some flexibility there. And we'll get into it in a future video this week about uh, the pension income tax credit. So, you know, part of this, and we'll go into that in that video, there's a benefit to converting to a RIF versus just pulling money out of your RSP. Also, money that you take out of a RIF can be income split. So, you know, we'll go through that as well in a future video as well. So, in general terms, this video, we're just talking about what happens to your RSP when you retire. Well, when you retire, it needs to be converted to a RIF. Now, lastly in this video, I just wanna talk about a locked-in RSP, because many of you will have a locked-in RSP. How does that differ from a regular RSP? So a locked in RSP would have come from an old uh, defined contribution pension plan from an old employer, okay? So it would have transferred to a locked in RSP. Now, when you retire, that locked in RSP converts to what's called a locked in RIF. The difference with a locked in RIF versus a regular RIF is there's going to be a maximum amount that you can take out. Okay, so there's a minimum and there's also a maximum. So you kind of have to fall within a boundary. Whereas a regular RIF, there's that minimum, but there's no maximum. So that would be the difference if you have a locked in RSP versus a regular RSP. When you retire and start drawing income out of it, a regular RIF, minimum, no maximum. A locked in RIF has that same minimum, but no max, or uh, has a maximum. So just be aware of that. Maximum on the locked in, no maximum on the regular RSP. So that's the last little bit of advice for transitioning into retirement. So when you retire, you want to convert your RSP to a RIF, whether all at once or maybe in part and parcel. Most of our clients, we will do a bit at a time, depending on their income stream, other income sources that they have, a taxable situation, uh, and also look at income splitting. Like any money that you need out of your RSP in retirement, you want to have it out of your RIF because you can split that income. Again, we'll get into that later this week in a future video. So hopefully that gives you kind of a clear idea on what happens to RSP when you retire. Like, where does it go? How do I take money out of it? So uh, tomorrow we're gonna talk about RIF minimums and the pension income tax credit. So that video is gonna come out tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. Thanks so much for joining us today in this video. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, make sure to do so. Click the subscribe button below and click that notification bell and you'll get a notification every day this week when we post that brand new video on what happens to RSPs when you retire, talking about tax strategies, tax planning, income planning, income splitting, all that kind of stuff. So thanks again for joining us. Have a great day.